things you know. But, but today is Pentecost Sunday. We have also today the First Holy Communion today, and then and then also we have uh, the uh, priest visiting with us, Father Fasson, and uh, from actually from Canada here, just uh, visiting with us today as well. And then the, the epistle for this uh, Mass of uh, Whit Sunday, of Easter, of uh, Pentecost Sunday, taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the days of the Pentecost were accomplished, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty wind coming, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as it were of fire, and it sat upon every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with diverse tongues according as the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation, under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded in mind, because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were all amazed and wondered, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how have we heard every man our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews also and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we have heard them speak in our own tongues of the wonderful works of God. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 14. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him, and we will make our abode within him. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my words. And the word which you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things have I spoken to you, abiding with you. And with the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring, you, bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, do I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You have heard that I said to you, I go away, and I come unto you. If you love me, you would indeed keep me glad, because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it shall come to pass, you may believe. I will not now speak many things with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and in me he hath not anything. But the Lord, but the, but the world, but that the world may know that I love the Father, as the Father hath given me commandment, so do I. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today, this second greatest feast day of the whole year today, the feast of the actually the greatest feast day of the whole year, the feast of Pentecost. The perfection of the work of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost, coming down on earth and now fulfilling their work, the Blessed Trinity, the day of the birthday of our Holy Church. And today, a consideration of uh, this day also, we have a First Holy Communion that we receive in our, of our Lord for the first time. And it's a great privilege, one of the great privileges of the priest is to be able to bring our Lord Jesus Christ to souls. We know that. It says in the Instructio Pro Ordinibus that the priest is the man of God, an instruction for the ordains, who carries God from heaven to the earth and gives them to souls. And he carries souls from the earth to heaven and gives them to God. And so one of the greatest privileges in the life of the priest is to be able to take Jesus Christ and put him inside of a soul. And so the First Holy Communion is a most sacred day to be able to give Holy Communion to a soul who, who, to receive our Lord in His body and blood and soul and divinity for the first time. And today also a sacred day, the Feast of Pentecost. And a few considerations on this, the sacred union. What happens? When was the very first Holy Communion? It was the very first time that human flesh 
receive the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ? When did heaven come down to earth? <coughs> and it happened on March 25th. Happened on a specific day when a 15-year-old girl was at alone in her house in Nazareth and an angel came and brought a message. And at the end of that message, the body, the blood, the soul, united itself to the divinity of, of, of God in the person of God the Son. And a great miracle happened. The greatest event in all of human history, God entered flesh. And now we can say that there is a woman, she is the mother of God. When we refer to this blessed sacrament, we call it the blessed sacrament, we call it the Holy Eucharist. Eucharist simply meaning thanksgiving, sacrament simply meaning mystery. And so that there is no, no greater mystery than body and blood and soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ making itself and himself able to be consumed by our flesh, to enter inside of us. And Eucharist, Thanksgiving, there's no greater thing for which to give thanks than God entering us. Heaven is simply the beatific vision. That's all that heaven is. Heaven is to see God face to face. Heaven is to possess God. And God has decided that there be a little heaven before we get there. We find that our God, He is so filled with infinite goodness. Everywhere we look in the world around us, all we can see is that God is good. God is good. This is noted by actually Athanasius Kircher, a Jesuit. He noticed that in the English language, the word for God is four letters, G-O-O-D, good. And in that language, the word God and the word good were not able to be deciphered one from another. For wherever there is good, there is God. And wherever there is God, there is good. And wherever God is not, there is not good. This is all that we can say about God. He is good. And when we see that the good God decides to give us a supernatural life, when the good God decides to give us something better than what he gave us when he gave us the sun and the stars and all the planets and all the animals and all of creation, the angels, it's going to be infinitely even more good. And how can there be any more good? Therefore he decided that his own flesh would enter into us. Where did it happen? It happened in the Blessed Virgin Mary. There is no blessed sacrament without the Blessed Virgin Mary. There is no Holy Eucharist without the Holy Mother. There is no real presence without the Blessed Virgin Mary, that young girl at the age of 15 saying the word fiat, let it be done unto me according to thy word. And when she said let it be done unto me according to thy word, God entered this world and he conquered sin. He entered this world and he destroyed Satan. All this happened because of one girl. And she carried Christ for nine months in her womb. These are the most beautiful months the world has ever known. Where there was a continual communion between the body and blood and soul and divinity of Christ growing within the womb of the mother of God. An absolute perfection, absolute peace, absolute happiness, complete and perfect contemplation. There was never a more beautiful union that could ever be in the whole history of the world, the union of that holy mother and her son. There, whenever we have the Holy Eucharist, whenever we see the Blessed Sacrament, Remember that for us, we can only call it blessed, we can only say it's holy, and it can only be touched by, our, by us because of that woman. There is no possibility of defending our faith, having our faith, loving our faith, possessing it at all without her. We have now a time in which we go a long time without Holy Communion in our present crisis in the church. 
Consider that moment in which the God, the Son, entered into the Blessed Virgin Mary when she said, Fiat, let it be done. And he entered into her and he remained for such a long time. And it is the desire of God that when he enters into us, that he remain. That is one reason why at the end of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the priest turns and he says, Ite misa est. I remember once we were building a church in Denver, Colorado, consecrating the church. There were a thousand people there on the day of the consecration of the church. It was didn't have its, it didn't have its CO yet, its certificate of occupancy. So of course, one of our beloved parishioners turned us into the cops, turned us into the fire marshal, and they showed up the day before the consecration. You can't have a thousand people in this church tomorrow. We're concerned about their safety. And I said, what's the concern? They don't know how to exit a church. And I said, you don't understand. We're Catholics. We practice exiting the church every week. It's called Ite Misa Est. <laughs> Whenever the tree says Ite Misa Est, you get in the front of that door. You're going to be dead. <laughs> they exit so fast that there is no way you can exit faster in a fire. We practice every week safe exiting the church by the windows, by the doors, Whenever the priest says, Ite Misa Est, that means it's over, we're done, you can go home now, and they're gone. <laughs> and the fire marshal, well, I guess you, I guess you practice it. So they left us alone <laughs> because of Ite Misa Est. That wasn't the original intention. When we say Ite Misa Est, uh. go, it is sent. What is sent? What is sent? The body, the blood, the soul, the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ is sent out into the world. It's carried by weak human beings, 11 of them today, not knowing, afraid of their own shadow just a few days ago, denying Christ just a few days ago, not understanding the ascension just a few days ago, but on this day, after ten days with the Blessed Virgin Mary in retreat, and after tongues of fire settled upon their head, they went, Ite Misa Est. It was sent. What was sent? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The body, the blood, and the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ was sent. It doesn't move without Mary. What do we call her? She's the daughter of the Father. And we read in the Book of Wisdom that the world was not yet formed, the sun was not yet formed, the mountains were not as yet, but I was there. She was there in the mind of God. When she created the sun, and when he created the earth, and he created the rocks, and created the sea, he created all things so that one day his mother would dwell here, and her son would rule this holy world that he created, and it was good. And she is the mother of the Son. The only way in which God the Son comes to you in the confessional and wipes away your sins, the only way he comes with the Father and the Holy Ghost and wipes away original sin and brings you divine life, is because she carries that divine truth. How can we understand what he says? How can we have the strength to do what our Lord says only because of those beautiful last words recorded of the Blessed Virgin Mary when she turned to some lowly servants? And the last words recorded of her in sacred scripture when she said to those servants, do whatever he tells you. You see, it's not enough for us Catholics or anyone else to be told by God what to do. It doesn't work. It's not enough. It's not enough to understand the truth. We have to hear our mother. We have to be strengthened by her. We have to be encouraged by her. We have to be told it's okay to do what he tells you. When we hear that, then we can go to be martyrs. Then we can fight the entire <laughs> earth. We can fight all the great armies in the world. We can conquer all and do the impossible. So long as we hear her speak, 
And so on this day in which you have the, the Holy Ghost coming out to souls, what is she also? She's the spouse of the Holy Ghost. She's the spouse of him. She really is. The love that is the Holy Ghost. How does that love come to this earth? How does the fire that is the Holy Ghost, how does the gift that is the Holy Ghost, he has many names, he is called the fire of God, he is called the love of God, he is called the gift of God, he is called the breath of God. How does the breath and the gift and the fire and the love come to us? All of them are so delicate and so easily snuffed out. The fire is protected by that Holy Mother and carried to us. The breath is carried by that Holy Mother. The gift is given by the Holy Mother. This is the way that love comes to us through our Holy Mother. She is rightly and truly called the mediatrix of all grace, of all good. And the wise men of the Middle Ages, the wise bishops, and the wise saints of those times, whenever they saw a miracle, the conversion of a soul, the rising of the dead, the multiplication of foods, and any other miracle... They simply said, it's just another glory of Mary. That's all. The glory of Mary. She is that most mysterious and beautiful creation of God. And he made to be his own mother. And he willed that when he traveled this earth, he will not go without her. And even when he fights his great battle, he said, I fight alone. That's what he told his apostles. Run along now. I fight alone. I go to this battle alone. But when we see him in the middle of that battle, you will find there's a woman standing at the foot of the cross. She ain't just mine. Mm -hmm. There she was. And because she was at the foot of that cross, a thief saw her. A thief was strengthened. A thief got the power to say that this man is innocent, we've done no wrong. The thief chastised the Caiaphas, he chastised the Jews, he chastised the Romans, he accepted justly his own punishment, and then he had a fire in his own heart to be able to say, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom, and he remembered. He was remembered and went to heaven on that day. Why? Because she was there. This is the power of the holy woman. <coughs> Modern women don't understand their power. What is her power? They're just there. Mm -hmm. She's just there. What did she do? I don't know. I didn't see anything. Whenever something happens, there's always a girl that's just there. Well, even though whenever a man does something wrong, there's always an innocent girl that's just there. She's just there somewhere. And whenever anything good happens, there's going to be a girl just there. Just being beautiful. Just being filled with the love of God. Just wanting goodness in the heart. Just communing with God. And somehow the world is transformed. And nobody knows how. It just happens. She was there at the foot of that cross. And all hated him. But there would be one that would save his soul that day. And he would be a thief. There will be another who would become a saint that day, and he was a soldier. What was the problem? The soldier was there to kill Christ, and he hated him. The thief was there to die in the just reward of his sins, but what was made them so fortunate? The soldier that was next to Christ was next to the woman that was at the foot of Christ. And that criminal was next to her. So if we are sinners, we hate God. We turn away from him, stay next to her. Somehow, somehow, she will make sure that her son forgets our sins. Somehow, she'll make sure that we'll have a happy ending. Somehow, everything will turn sweetly in our lives. And we don't know why. It's just the power that God gave to woman. The power that he gave to her, a power that can never be taken away, and that the devil is petrified of. Absolutely petrified. St. Augustine hated God. And he was very proud. But St. Ambrose said to his mother, Your tears, 
and your love shall not be forgotten. Your tears and your love shall be heard by God. And so powerful was her tears, so powerful was her love, that not only did Augustine convert, but we all know, and we will know in heaven, that of all the great fathers of the church, none are as great as Augustine. He is not just another father of the church. He is the greatest of them all. He is the greatest heart that God ever created in those first thousand years of his church. What made him great? It was a mother. And the devil is terrified today in our wicked times of the mothers that will change the world. Where does a priest come from? He comes from a mother. Without mother, there is no priest. There is no Jesus Christ when he decided to become priest. He became united. His whole divinity of God the Son was united inside of that flesh. Where did it happen? It happened in the cathedral of the Virgin Mary's womb. It is more beautiful than any church. And in fact, whenever we make something beautiful in the Catholic Church, all it is to try to do is imitate a small amount the beauty of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's all. And how do we keep our faith? It's only because of her. She says that she loves all of her son. She doesn't love part of him. She loves all of him. And so therefore, if we are strength to her, she'll make sure that we hold all the dogmas of the church. We will not cut up Jesus Christ into a spiritual Christ. And we don't worry about the Christ who has nothing to do with politics. Or the Christ that has nothing to do with science. Or the Christ has nothing to do with economics. Or the Christ has nothing to do with my marriage. Or the Christ has nothing to do with my house. And nothing to do with my rooms. Christ is everywhere. He's in all the rooms of the house. He is in all the houses of parliament. He is in all the places of the world. And there he must reign. Who will make sure that he somehow gets there? It's going to be the Blessed Virgin Mary. In her mysterious way. Because she walked to her son and she said, Son, they have no wine. He wasn't going to perform his first miracle that day. She changed his schedule. They have no wine. Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour has not yet come. All right. I'm just saying, they have no wine. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> and he has no choice. He has no choice whatsoever. Therefore, he makes 120 gallons of wine. About 500 liters. Were you losers that have that other demonic measurement system? <laughs> 120 gallons of wine. That's a lot of wine for some happy apostles. Because she said they have no wine. So she made sure that there was enough. And so it is that when we consider this most holy faith of ours and the most holy uh, uh, Holy Ghost, the Holy Eucharist, the Father and the Son, none of it comes to us without her. None of it. And so many have hated God. And she gets them to him to change the mind. She changes everything. So when there was a recurring to the Blessed Sacrament, how does the Blessed Sacrament travel? How does it travel? How does our Lord travel? In the host, he doesn't travel by his legs. He doesn't walk. He has to be carried. He has willed that when he left this earth, that he would be carried. How did John the Baptist receive the grace to be able to understand God? How did he receive the grace to be able to speak to his mother and say that God is here? All he did was hear the Blessed Virgin Mary say, Hello. That's all. She just simply went to her cousin Elizabeth and she said, Hello. Greetings. That's all. But in those greetings, a baby, the greatest of the prophets of all time, heard the mother of God speak. And he recognized that God was in flesh inside of her womb. And he leapt for joy 
There's great sadness in the world today because they are not in love with Mary. That's why there's sadness. Our homes are empty because they don't have mothers in them. The devil hates mothers. He can't stand it when a mother is carrying a baby because he remembers those nine months when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was in the most holy place, in the most beatific vision on earth, and he couldn't get there, and he couldn't fight him. And the Mother of God spoke with her divine Son. And they spoke everything that ever needed to be said. And they contemplated all the contemplations that the saints have tried to touch. Whatever a saint elevates in the sky, Whenever St. Paul and the others like him are taken up to the third heaven to see things forbidden for man to see, to hear things forbidden for man to hear, what do they hear? What do they see? They see the Blessed Virgin Mary and our Lord Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday morning looking at one another after he has conquered hell and risen from the dead. They see him with her in the womb there is a language between the mother and the son that no one can understand. But the closest we can come to it is by having the love of truth. Having the love of our faith. Love will help us to enter into that world, for it is only good. It is only good. And as St. Francis de Sales used to say, if you find not love, where there is not love, put love, and there you will find love. Where there is not the faith, put the faith, and you will find it. Where there is not God, put God, and you will find him there. Where there is not goodness, put goodness, and you will find it there. And how did all this happen? Because God had created this world, and Adam and Eve decided to tear it apart. And they decided to sin. And they decided to shake it with their original sin. And then the Blessed Virgin was put into that world. And love entered back into the world. And goodness entered back into the world. And now we can say to the angels, you may be angels. You may have a most magnificent form and not subject to our weaknesses. But we have Mary. And the angels back down. Mm -hmm. Ask the angels what they are. Ask them. They are servants. They are messengers. They are greater than us in every way. But they say we are but servants. We are but messengers to that race. Which is the race of Mary. St. Bernard tells us that on that day on March 25th. When the angel Gabriel came down into that place of Nazareth, he was supposed to be obedient. And he was supposed to give a message. Will you be the mother of God? Angels never go above their commands, says Bernard. Angels never do that. But Gabriel made an exception. Gabriel broke the angelic law. He went down from heaven with his message. The door was opened in that house of Nazareth, and he saw the beauty of Mary, and he saw that she was full of grace. And he simply said, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. The devil hates those words. He hates them so much. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Oh yeah, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. <laughs> he was so overtaken by her beauty, so overtaken by the magnificence of she that was full of grace, says St. Bernard, that he could do nothing but immediately share that beauty with all the angels. And all the angels in heaven, the billions of angels that there are, they all knelt before her and made her their queen. Gabriel said in the name of all those holy angels, Ave Maria, and honored her. And then she accepted to be the mother of God a little bit later. 
and the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and the rest is history. The angels destroy the devils. St. Thomas tells us, where did St. Michael get his strength from? He was a little angel. Where did he get his strength from to wipe out Lucifer and his whole cohort? It came from our Lord Jesus Christ through Mary. It came from him. Who is like unto God? So the defeat of Satan in the very beginning, it was through the ministration of the power of Mary. The defeat of Satan at the end, by her crushing his head, it shall be through her. The defeat of the devil in the middle, by Christ coming into this world and speaking his divine truth, it comes through her. And the conversion of souls, it comes through her. Try to find something that doesn't. You're not interested. Keep it for yourself and the devils in hell. There is no good thing that does not come through her. There never is, there never will be anything. And so we have the day of the receiving of the Blessed Sacrament. It is most blessed. We can touch Christ. How can we touch him without fear? How can we touch him when we know that we are not worthy? How is that possible? Without her saying, it's okay. Do whatever he tells you. And he says he wants to be your food. He wants to be inside of you. He wants to dwell inside of your weak heart. He wants to dwell inside of your empty mind. He wants to dwell inside of your weak flesh. Accept it. Do we know why God is good? He is just good. Accept his goodness. And all that is evil shall be stamped out. And all that is evil shall be wiped out. And all that is necessary for us, love Mary. Love our Holy Mother. She will teach us how to receive him worthily and to be able to carry him for a longer time. So many souls only touch Christ for a brief moment. The soldiers touched him as they hit him. So many touched him as they bounced off of him. But who holds him? Who keeps him inside of themselves? Only those who learn the tricks and teachings of the Holy Mother of God. So we must say those beautiful words. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And the devil hates those words. Say them often in the Holy Rosary. And hold the rosary in the hand. And carry the Holy Rosary with you wherever you go. And on the day of the First Holy Communion, we have the receiver of the scapular. It is our shield. And the shield is always worn next to the heart. The heart needs its greatest protection because the heart is softened and made to go towards all the evil things of the world, to go towards impurity and to go towards drunkenness and to go towards all the, the gold of the world, the honors of the world. And the heart needs to be protected. And so we have that shield, that brown cloth, the shield of Mount Carmel, that holy shield. That shield protects the heart. There have been many cases in history where soldiers in battle hit with a sword, hit with an arrow. The arrow hit that scapular and did not penetrate. In modern times, the bullet hit that scapular and didn't penetrate. The scapular is our best defense. And it protects the heart. We're worthy to receive that scapular of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the day that we receive him for the first time. And hence we have the custom of blessing the Holy Scapular and imposing the simple Holy Scapular on a child, on one who receives Holy Communion, on the day of their Holy Communion. The day they receive Christ is the day they receive Mary. She never comes without Christ. She never travels without him. And wherever she goes, she carries him. All of him. And whoever loves her must love him must be brought to him. And the Holy Ghost, he simply carries 
the divine truth of the Father, the divine truth that is the Son, the divine love that is Himself inside of us, and always, always through His spouse, always through Mary. Each of us every day lives with original sin. We are growing older. Our bodies are growing weak because Eve gave a forbidden fruit to Adam. We are inclined to weakness and sin because Eve gave a forbidden fruit to Adam and that is the great scorn and the great malice and the great curse of woman. But it means nothing to us because all of it is wiped out and all of it is defeated and all of it is made better because of that most wonderful woman that wiped out all the scorn and all the, day, all the horror that was in that first woman. We will come to her when we see her in heaven, when we see Eve. And we will thank her, as it says in the sacred exultant, of the happy fault of Adam, which brought to us such a wonderful Redeemer and such a wonderful Mother. Just love our Holy Mother. Love our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to her in all things. And then when our time of trouble comes, she'll find a way. She'll find a way to make sure her son forgets our sins. Make sure her son enters inside of us. And we're ready for the kingdom of heaven. God bless you all. And the Father and the Son of the
et expecto resurrectionem mortuorum, et vitam et tulis seculi.